Good morning. Welcome to Christ UMC. This is Sam Evans, and that was Trinity. And uh, we just want to say welcome, and thanks for being here. Here's Kelly. Thanks for being here for this Rally Sunday. Enjoy the service. Bye. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth McCauley. I am lead pastor at Christ United Methodist Church in downtown Rochester, Minnesota. It is September. It is Rally Sunday. It is a good thing uh, to be together. So welcome to this time of worship. We have video worship at nine o'clock every Sunday. Uh, during this time of uh, being exquisitely careful with uh, being in community together. So uh, welcome to this time of worship on video. At 10 o'clock this morning, we'll gather in our East parking lot for parking lot worship which is an incredibly safe way for you to see each other through windshields. Uh, we try, we, we, we do practice impeccable social distancing. So if you want to come, we have an FM radio station you tune into. If you want to bring lawn chairs, you can get out of your car with a mask on and socially distanced and uh, be present for the best band, uh, I think, in well, I don't want to say the world, that could be an overstatement, but you know what I'm saying, a great band and a good chance to be together. Following the 10 o'clock worship this morning, we will adjourn to the east west parking lot and we'll have a trunk or treat style of being able to find out about different offerings in our program life. We also are gonna be featuring carefully wrapped donuts and healthy popcorn and music and great fun. So please come if you're able and if it's a good thing for you. At 10 o'clock this morning, uh, we'll have worship in the East lot. We'll have information following worship in the West lot. And, uh, we, and our website is always full of information. So two things, will you sign in? Let us know that you're here. And will you share this with others uh, so that uh, the reach of this church can uh, go beyond uh, Rochester and who knows where. If this church is feeding your soul, it may feed others as well. In fact, I'm quite sure it will. So anyway, that's what I have to say about that. Check our website, check all the information. So glad you're here. Welcome to worship.
Good morning. Would you join with me now in a time of prayer? Let us pray. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory and God of love. On this Sunday morning, we come together to sing and to pray our praise to you, Almighty God. We thank you for the chance to be together in worship with our kindred in Christ. And we thank you for each person who worships with us from homes and hotels, from hospitals and care centers, from prison cells and jails, from treatment facilities and homeless shelters. We thank you for the precious gifts of life and love and kindness. We thank you for upcoming autumn colors and for cool nights for pumpkins and the beauty in watching the migration of birds. We thank you for people who understand us and stand by us. We ask for your help in getting to trust you more deeply and to know you more fully. In the midst of all these blessings, we are keenly aware of the needs of this, your world. Please be with those in California and other Western states whose homes and livelihoods have been lost in the wildfires. And we pray for all those who grieve. We remember those who lost loved ones in the 9-11 attacks. We pray for those whose loved ones have died because of the color of their skin. We pray for those who have had losses in the pandemic. And right here in our own church family, we pray for the family and friends of Dan Allman who grew up at this church and who died at age 29. We pray also for longtime member Joanne Hoffman upon her death and lift up her family as well. Gracious God, teach us how to love each other, how to love in words and deeds. Break down our barriers Put aside our prejudices. Help us to see your divine image in every person. And give us wisdom in confronting injustice and strength to persevere. As the hymnal writer said, may we be victors in the midst of strife and lead us sunward in the triumph song of life. We pray all this along with the silent petitions of our hearts in the name of Jesus, our brother and companion in all things. Amen. Good morning. Today I'm holding a wonder box. Do you ever wonder about things? What does God look like? How many animals were in Noah's Ark? What was Jesus's favorite color? I know I wonder about a lot of things too. This year, we get to wonder together. Over Zoom, please join us for Wonderful Wednesdays. Miss Carla and Miss Jody from 5 to 5.30, ages 3 through 2nd grade. 5.30 to 6, grades 3 through 5. For more information, email Jody at cumethodist.com. Let's go ahead and end in prayer. Dear God, be with us as we wonder, learn, and share ideas. Amen.
This is 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 through 8 and 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and only of angels, I have not love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of, of prophecy and can fathom all the m mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have faith that can mo move mountains, but I ha but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love's, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with, with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. And now these three, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Good morning, and uh, welcome into this beautiful, poignant poem written by Naomi Shihab Nye, daughter of an American mom and a Palestinian dad. Uh, grew up part of the time in Jerusalem and part of the time in the U.S. And she writes this poem, she says, as a secretary receiving the words, the poetry and the spirit from beyond her. This occurred during her honeymoon with her husband in South America, one week into their travels and their adventures. Uh, they befell a robber uh, and they lost everything along with other bus passengers and one man was actually killed. And uh, we read about him in the poem itself. Uh, there in South America, knowing no one, uh, they encounter a stranger who asks after them and then provides consoling compassion, uh, commiseration, and encourages them uh, to go about the problem solving, to making do with their honeymoon, which they do. And as she's waiting for her husband to get reclaim traveler's checks uh, so they can continue their travel and their grief uh, and their wonderment, uh, she hears a voice. And this is what the voice says to her and through her to us. Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that had kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches in the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the claw. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for. And then goes with you everywhere like a shadow or a friend. Amen. So we practice kindness through our church, because the gospel of Jesus Christ calls us 
to share what we have, which is sometimes attention, sometimes our willingness to see what is, and certainly our ability to respond to the distress of others. So as we enter into this time of offering, give thanks. Consider how it is. Kindness is our shared language and how it is we embody that in the world. Share who you are and what you have with a sense of gratitude. Rally Sunday is a day that's usually a fizz with energy and excitement and kids zinging off of each other and uh, musical wildness and all sorts of things. And this year, Rally Sunday is different. As we talked about what sort of grounding message we want to be able to live together as Christ United Methodist Church in these challenging days of pandemic, in these days leading up to a very divisive national election, in these days of anxiety around um, so many things. It seemed to me that more than anything else, if we can remember who we are, we will be well blessed. Our community will be well blessed. And so as we begin this year together, this new year as a congregation, I will invite us to lean into this core ethical teaching that Jesus gives. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. I want to share Eugene Peterson's 
speaking of these blessings because if we ground our convictions in the notion that we are called to apprehend the blessings that God sends our way and to amplify those blessings, to lean into those blessings, to believe those blessings, we will be the people of Jesus Christ in a time and in a world that needs the people of Jesus Christ in urgent sorts of ways. So hear this word. This is Eugene Peterson speaking of Jesus telling his community on the top of a mountain, which means they are figuratively and perhaps even literally closer to God, although we believe that God is in all places and uh, permeates all that is. Nonetheless, hear this teaching, Matthew 5. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him, and arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and he taught his climbing companions. And that's who we are together, right? We're climbing companions. And Jesus said this, you're blessed when you are at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and God's rule. You're blessed when you feel you have lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you are content with just who you are, no more and no less. That's the moment you find yourself proud owners of everything that cannot be bought. You are blessed when you have worked up a good appetite for God. God is food and drink in the best meal you will ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right then you can see God in the outside world. You are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of to compete or to fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You are blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. That persecution drives you even farther into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourself blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you in order to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they're uncomfortable. You can be glad. Rejoice even, for though they don't like it, I do. And all of heaven applauds and know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Christ United Methodist Church and the movement of Jesus Christ is called to be a real, relevant, vibrant, courageous witness in the tumult and pain of these days. And so that is the work we get to do together. We will be reading together a book called Another Way. I don't know if that's in the screenshot or not, but anyway, if not, Oliver will make a way to show uh, the book cover. And there are small groups forming uh, about reading this book. And the reason I chose this book is because it's, re it's written by uh, three theologians, two of whom are black and one who is a white woman. And uh, they talk about how it is we can learn to live another way a countercultural way, the way of Jesus Christ. 
So the first chapter is about how do you create caring community? So I'm inviting you, will you check our website? Will you come to the trunk or treat style uh, informational session at 10 o'clock today in our parking lot? Uh, if you can't make that or should not make that for safety reasons, check our website. We have information about how you can get connected with other people because this is a lonely time and this is a frightening time and this is exactly the time for people of Jesus Christ to own who we are, to witness to who we are, and to be people of blessing. So thank you for your presence. Thank you that together we get to live the love ethic of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the ways you practice kindness with those in your home and those in this world. Thank you for the ways you live your witness to the blessing and power of Christ Jesus. Welcome to ministry, amen. Jesus was always the guest. In the homes of Peter and Jairus, Mary and Martha, Johanna and Susanna, Jesus was always the guest. At the meal tables of the wealthy where he pled the cause of the poor, he was always the guest. Upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger. Jesus was always the guest, but here at this table, Jesus is the host. Those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. Those who would wash his feet must first let him make them clean. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. Jesus Christ, who has sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and a command rooted in the experience that he shared with his disciples in the upper room in Jerusalem. On the night in which he was betrayed, as he was sitting with his beloveds at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Later after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, this cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this, all of you, in remembrance of me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and wine, the produce of the earth and fruit of human labor. In these, Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Christ can make us whole. So would you pray with us? The Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right for you made us and before us you made the world that we inhabit. And before the world you made the eternal home in which through Christ we have a place. All that is spectacular, all that is plain, have their origin in you. All that is lovely, all who are loving, have, the, have in you their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know and the universe beyond our ken, 
we particularly praise you, for whom eternity cannot contain, for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus. For his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our very hearts, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our harmless generalities, for his disturbing presence and his innocent suffering, his fearless dying and his rising into life, breathing forgiveness, we praise you and we worship him. Here too, our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit who even yet now confronts us with your claims and attracts us to your goodness. Therefore, we gladly join our voices with the song of the church on earth as, an end, as it is in heaven as we sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Together we sing, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent. And remember him who came because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts, and bringing nothing in our hands. We yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving, which Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on the gift of this bread and this wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus and let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Amen. So among friends and gathered around a table, Jesus took the gift of the bread. He gave thanks to you, gracious God. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, and gave thanks to you, almighty God, and said, drink from this cup, all of you, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we ask your blessing on these gifts and on all who receive, that we may be nourished by this holy food and strengthened to be in love and service to you and to all our neighbors, wherever they may be. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. the bread of life, and the cup of salvation. The body of Christ broken for you, for me, for this world we love. And the blood of Christ, the very life source of God's heart poured out for you and for me and for this world that we love. Let us share this meal together 
feeling the presence of all that is holy binding us one to the other. May we know ourselves to be in deep communion. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the ways you provide nourishment, for the ways you connect us one to the other, for the power of the host of this meal, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Having shared the meal of Jesus Christ, we celebrate the opportunity to live the meal of Jesus Christ, blessed and broken, called to kindness, grateful for being fed by God's grace. We turn and we are grace in the city of Rochester and beyond, wherever it is you find yourself. Please know blessing and share it. Amen. Mm -hmm.